Hi, my name is Dr. Abbas Raza and I'm the current president of International Society of Endocrinology. In the series of MedBuzz, um, I'm going to talk about a very relevant topic to us in the diabetes and endocrine world, which is how to address the taboos forbidden questions in diabetes regarding the sexual dysfunction. As MedBuzz is a series in which we do a quick recap of what needs to be known, I'm going to address three major points in this regard. With this, I would want to start with a very simple question. What is 2 plus 2? And again, the answer could be as simple as 4. But we must realize that it's not the case every time. Because if you put 2 plus 2 side by side, it can become 22. Why do I put this in today's presentation is that sometimes we have to realize that it's not only a single disease process. A sexual dysfunction in a diabetes patient could not only be just purely related to diabetes, but it could be related to a number of things. I have enumerated about three points um, in, this, in this quick talk on MetBuzz, and we are going to discuss all of them. Starting having a kickstart is one of the major contributors in the dis uh, sexual dysfunction in diabetes patients, and this is diabetes distress. Diabetes distress in itself is not related to the stress of diabetes, but it can lead to depression and other comorbid psychiatric illnesses. Why is it so? It's not only common in type 1 or type 2, it's common in both. And the reason is it's not a one-off disease that you have for short duration. It's a long-term disease which requires a 24-7 commitment from the patient. And I think that's why it's important. We don't have to dig too, um, too deep to find out that the studies have shown, including the study that I show right here, in the DAWN2 study, that there is an incidence of higher level of distress in the patient with diabetes. And there's a quite a few members, quite a few number of patients who go through this, which leads to an ultimate diagnosis of even depression, which is also very prevalent in patients with diabetes. It's not only the patients who experience that, but it's also the family, as well as the people who surround the people patients who have diabetes. Hence, it's an important factor. So why is it not discussed commonly? Why don't the patients come and tell you that probably their sexual dysfunction is related to the diabetes distress? Probably the reason is that no one has asked them in the past if they were going through a distressful period because of a diagnosis, a new diagnosis or an old diagnosis of diabetes, or they thought that Talking to other people about the stress might not be relevant in these, uh, in these individuals. The other factor which is very important is the doctors not asking it. And I think sometimes we don't have, we, we feel that there's a crunch of time and we don't have time to dig into the other stresses of these individuals. Although we must realize now that this is a part and parcel of diabetes management. And also, historically, we were not sure if actually diabetes distress or the depression can lead to complication in diabetes management. We recently published an article called EDIT, which is Early Detection and Intervention in Diabetes Distress. It was a consensus statement um, by South Asian Federation for Endocrine Societies, which was published in uh, JPMA recently. Hence, um, in this article, we talk about the euthymic model, in which the patient as well as the the doctor come to a conclusive conversation between both of them so that again as you can see in this slide that they both develop communication skills and they are able to communicate to each other as far as getting their message across and stress dis um, discussing the diabetes distress as well as other um, conditions in diabetes hence it's important to know that the diabetes and um, distress could be a major contributor you can clearly show that this is not only the poor management, the distress does not only lead to the poor management, but it can also lead to a lot of sexual dysfunction, which are related to the distress as well as depression in these individuals. And hence, it is important for us to dig down if someone is coming to you with the complaints of um, sexual dysfunction in diabetes to make sure that they are not going through this disorder. The other most important, this is the second most important component of dealing with the uh, distress uh, with its sexual dysfunction in diabetes is the use of other medication drugs in, in patients who are using diabetes or patients who have diabetes. And the reason I say this is that um, alcohol use is very common. It is more common than we think. And it's not the only use part of it. It's also the abuse part of the alcohol. And as you can see, there are a number of complications which you can attribute 
to the excessive use of alcohol. So someone coming in with diabetes has a certain dysfunction in their sexual life, you probably attribute it to the diabetes, but that probably could not be the case if they are going through an abusive um, use of alcohol. Alcohol is one component of the things. The other important thing is the marijuana. Since the legalization of marijuana for, um, for in a number of countries, we have seen a surge in the use of marijuana in patients with diabetes. Hence, it is important to also look into the use of marijuana. Marijuana, as you know, is attributed to the changes in the dietary habit. It's also attributed to the certain behaviors which can lead to the worsening of diabetes in, um, in these individuals who are abusing marijuana in a wrongful way. It was a case study which was seen, uh, published recent, um, in, in last few years ago on sildenafil and the use of marijuana and leading to a cardiovascular event. And that was probably attributed to the, um, the cytochrome P450 3A4 isoenzyme in which, uh, which is affected by both of them. Hence, sometimes we have to think about the drug abuse. Last but not the least, is the endocrine disorders and I will leave you with this message that please if remember that if you have one endocrine disorder you are more likely to develop other endocrine disorders as well here we have quoted a couple of three of them like thyroid disease hypogonadism as well as prolactin but there are a number of endocrine disorders which can lead ultimately to the sexual dysfunction in patients with diabetes so if you have one endocrine disorder Please think of other endocrine disorder which could happen leading to the symptoms that the patient come up to you for this. With this, I will leave you and thank you for um, having me part of the MedBus series. And I hope um, this brief introduction will help you decide, help you take care of these taboos forbidden questions in diabetes when you're dealing with patients with sexual dysfunction. Thank you very much.